Hello everybody, it's Fufu here, and I'm back for another Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon video. So, you want to use Totem Pokemon in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. This is a new feature. You're allowed to get your hands on those Totem Pokemon that you've been fighting in the trials, and they are huge. They are pretty cool looking. I really want to use them in battle, and I'm sure you do too. So, I'm going to be talking about how you can get them, and which ones are good and how you can make sure that you get the best one possible in this video. So first of all, let's go over some basics. These Pokemon are gifts given for collecting totem stickers which are found all around the Alola region. And this video is not a guide to get all of those stickers. I'm sure you can find very good ones elsewhere. My friend Nick, aka Superblar, made a really good one which I will link in the description. So go and check that out if you're looking for the totem stickers if you really want to get one. But that's how you get them and then you go and talk to um, Samson Oak and he will give you the totem Pokemon that you can have. The Pokemon available for this are different in the different versions of the game. So in Ultra Sun, you can get Gumshoes, Alolan Marowak, Lorantis, Vikavolt and Rabombi. In Ultra Moon, you can get Alolan Raticate, Araquanid, Salazzle, Togedemaru and Kamoo, and then in both you can get Mimikyu. Obviously Mimikyu being a fan favourite, they obviously just put that in both because everyone would want to get a Mimikyu. There's another thing that may influence which game you get in terms of version exclusives. Um, these are really cool Pokemon, so if you want a specific one of them, make sure that you get the right game. In terms of what the Totem Pokemon means, it's really just an aesthetic change only. There aren't any changes to its stats, it's just the same Pokemon really. There are no stat boosts when you send it out into a battle, like when you start a trial, the Totem Pokemon gets stat boosts. That does not happen with your Totem Pokemon. What's slightly different is their slightly different height and weight. So certain move mechanics like Heavy Slam, like Low Kick will work slightly differently, but not too much else, and it's really nothing to write home about. The only real reason to use these are that they look amazing, they look a bit goofy, and they look badass. So I'm, I'm all for gimmicks like that, and I definitely would want to use one anyway. When you pick these up, unfortunately they are shiny locked, so you won't be able to get shiny totem Pokemon. That would be a really cool thing to be able to show off, but unfortunately you can't do that, so that's a bit of a shame. Because they are gifts, you can 100% guarantee the nature of the Pokemon that you want to pick up if you use a Pokemon with Synchronize. So natures are important in competitive play, they give a slight boost to one of your stats and a slight drop to another, and this can be really, really helpful. You can try to catch Pokemon with the nature that you want using a Pokemon with Synchronize that has the same nature that you want at the beginning of your party. Normally this only has a 50% chance with wild Pokemon, but with gift Pokemon it's a 100% chance. So what I did was I just bred a ton of Abras. Abra has the ability Synchronize, and if you just breed them then you'll get a load of different natures, and I just bred them until I got the natures that I want. So I've got a box full of Synchronize Abras which are going to be really helpful when I'm looking for anything and also if I want to do shiny hunting and stuff in the future I can try to get a shiny with the right nature using these so it's a really useful thing to do as a tip of mine. These Pokemon are also guaranteed three perfect IVs. IVs are hidden values in the game which determine how good your Pokemon stats are and you get three perfect ones for these totem Pokemon which is really good and it means that you can actually soft reset to get five perfect IVs if you want. Five IVs is really what you need for competitive and it wouldn't take you too long just to soft reset to try and get that. Um, it might take a little bit of time but I think it's worth it if you really do want to use these competitively. I have checked, you can breed the totem Pokemon, but unfortunately the Pokemon that you, that you breed aren't totem Pokemon themselves. So can you just imagine like a totem Alolan Raticate breeding and having a totem Alolan Rattata? That would be kind of ridiculous. I'd quite like to see like a massive Rattata, but it doesn't happen unfortunately. And if you evolve that Rattata, it won't be a totem Raticate either. So that's a bit of a shame. It's just this one Pokemon that you get, this one gift Pokemon that can have that totem form. In terms of breeding, obviously because you only get these as gift Pokemon, you won't be able to get any extra egg moves or anything like that. And also, abilities are predetermined, so the gift Pokemon that you get will have a specific ability attached to it. So with all of those basics out of the way, let's consider which ones are worth your time and can be used competitively very well, and which ones are just 
kind of trash and aren't worth your time. So first of all, the trash ones, and right at the top of the list, I'm really disappointed, but it's Alolan Raticate. And I like this Pokemon because it's surprisingly powerful with the Hustle ability. Even though its stats aren't great, with a Swords Dance up, it can do some damage. But that is where the problem lies. This Pokemon comes with its hidden ability, Thick Fat. And I thought that wouldn't be too much of an issue because I would be able to maybe ability capsule this to give it its hustle ability, which is the better one for competitive play because it hits harder. But unfortunately, because it's its hidden ability, you can't use the ability, the ability capsule on Pokemon with their hidden ability. So it's got thick fat, which is its hidden ability, which is normally a good thing, but it's just bad. It's so bad. This thing will not be able to be used competitively at all uh, compared to the normal Raticate. So that's such a shame in my opinion. Another one up there, another one of my favourites as well is Lorantis. I really like Lorantis, but unfortunately it's an ability issue again. Here this time it has Leaf Guard, which is one of its normal abilities, and really the only viable Lorantis ability is its hidden ability, which is contrary. Again, ability capsule won't be able to turn a normal ability into its hidden ability. So Lorantis, again, is not going to be great competitively. And the last one on this trash list is going to be Tugadamaru, unfortunately. Now, though it is usable and it does now get Iron Head through tutors, which you will be able to use, it gets Zing Zap and it has a few good coverage moves there. It doesn't get Encore or Fake Out. These are egg moves and you won't be able to get them onto your Tugadamaru. And I think that's pretty important because those are very, very important moves for Tugadamaru in doubles format, especially in VGC. We did see Tugadamaru used pretty effectively in VGC 17, but it always had Fake Out and Encore. Almost all sets for this Tugadamaru had Fake Out or Encore. Maybe not so much Encore, but definitely Fake Out. And that really affects its viability. Though you may well see this used, I don't think that it is worth your time getting a, to a Totem one. I don't think it's going to be all that useful. So now we're in the meh category where you can use these Totem Pokemon, but they do miss out slightly on what a normal Pokemon might have. And so in this category, we've got Gumshoes, which actually gets its best ability probably in adaptability. And it doesn't really miss out on its egg moves either. It's just not such a great mon. It's not very easy to use it in battles because it's just not so powerful. It's kind of slow and not super bulky either. Um, it does have very powerful normal type moves, which is nice. And I think if you want to use a Gumshoes, you may as well use the Totem form. Um, although another thing to consider is these Totem forms, people will know what ability you have. So it's signposting to the opponent and giving them extra information which you wouldn't otherwise give to them so that they can play around that a bit better. But adaptability is a really good ability for Gumshoes because it means its returns or its Giga Impacts, for example, are hitting really hard. It's just not so great to begin with. Next up, we've got Robombi. Now, this Pokemon is actually really good, and I don't think that the Totem will necessarily be bad. It's just it does miss out on some important things like Moonblast, which is its most powerful Fairy-type move. It does get Dazzling Gleam, but Moonblast is much more powerful. It has a nice secondary effect as well, so that's a bit sad. And it also now misses out on Sticky Web, which is a new egg move that it gets in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And so, therefore, a normal Robombi would definitely have more options than Totem Robombi. Um, so that's a bit of a shame. It comes with a Sweet Veil ability, which means it can't be put to sleep, which is nice. Although, again, Shield Dust could potentially be better there. So, all in all, Robombi falls in this meh category. And then I've also put Vikavolt and Salazzle here, which are goodish mons. They don't miss out too much in terms of the totem Pokemon again, but again, they're not super duper viable and they miss out on a couple of egg moves. For example, Salazzle doesn't get fake out again. So I put them in this mech category. It's still potentially worth getting them and using them, but you're signposting to your opponent about which abilities you might have and things like that. So I don't know. Uh, I think that they're potentially viable, but just not as viable as the really good ones, which we're going to go over in a second. So the really good Pokemon, we've got Alolan Marowak here. It comes with its Rockhead ability, which is great for the offensive sets. Most Alolan Marowak nowadays actually run this Rockhead set because it means that when you use a very powerful Flare Blitz, you won't get any recoil, which is great. It doesn't really miss out on any of its egg moves at all, and you can always put on that Thick Club to make it have 
so much attack, it hits so hard, and you can have so much fun with this Pokemon. The tutor moves are going to make it really good as well. It gets Ally Switch, which is crazy for doubles. So I think this total Pokemon could be really fun and really good to use, and it's worth trying to get a good one. The next Pokemon here is going to be Araquanid. It comes with its water bubble ability, which is so fantastic. It makes its water moves hit like a truck. Doesn't really miss out on its egg moves. It doesn't get sticky web if you go for the Totem Pokemon, which is a bit of a shame. A really good move now in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. But as an offensive Pokemon, it is excellent. It doesn't need that sticky web. We've seen how powerful it can be in doubles and in singles. So it's maybe worth getting that Totem Araquanid to intimidate your opponents. Mimikyu is a really great choice for your totem Pokemon because it's not really giving anything away. Mimikyu only has one ability anyway, which is Disguise, so you're always going to have that whether it's totem or not. It doesn't really miss out on its egg moves. The only one is Curse for 1v1s really, and then maybe Destiny Bond, but I don't see those moves being used very often. I guess Sword Stance is the main one I see, or maybe some Trick Room. You can use either of those with the totem form. It gets all of its moves, so I think that we could see quite a lot of Totem Mimikyu. And the final one on this list is going to be Komoro. It only has three egg moves anyway, so it really doesn't miss out on anything there. And it comes with its hidden ability, which is Overcoat. So that's a pretty good ability. It means you won't get damaged by hail or sand and it also means that powder moves won't affect you so spore and sleep powder won't put you to sleep which can be very helpful its other abilities are very usable too and having a totem pokemon means your opponent will know that you're overcoat but that's not too much of a big deal and this pokemon anyway has so many more tools at its disposal such as its signature z move which is crazy it does so much damage and it boosts all of its stats which is so good and it also has access to close combat which means it hits so hard right off the bat it has powerful dragon type moves it has great coverage with all the move tutors so this pokemon is going to be a force to be reckoned with so why not use the biggest komoro you can get with the totem komoro i think it's worth your time trying to get a good one there so those are my tips for the totem pokemon i think that alolan marowak araquanid and komoro are really really going to be great and very usable as totem pokemon what you need to do is get yourself a synchronized pokemon to make sure that it's the right nature they'll have pretty good ivs anyway but you can make sure that you check and the soft reset to get the best ivs possible and there you go it's actually not too hard to get a good totem pokemon at the end of the day so i hope you have fun using these ridiculously goofy massive pokemon i definitely will i hope this was helpful that's going to be all for today i've been for you've been awesome and hopefully see you next time goodbye